Time to talk about the Omit B season 3 finale titled Opening Night. It begins with the trio and Loretta talking about how they plan to catch Donna, confessing to Ben Glenroy's murder on tape. Loretta then tells the trio that she knows that Donna is sick and shows them the hanky given by Dickie, hoping that it will help with the investigation. At the Gooseberry, Howard sweeps for good luck and Jonathan takes the leading man cocktail. Mabel meets with Donna and gives her flowers and a card telling her there's a new review waiting for her in the stage manager's office. When she gets there, she finds the trio who confronts her about what they believe she's done. Donna immediately admits to poisoning Ben, states that she didn't mean to kill him but make him sick enough to buy her time. Mabel accuses her of pushing Ben, she denies it until Charles comes forward with a death rattle hanky with her lipstick. She thinks and then admits to pushing Ben down the elevator shaft. Donna asks the trio to delay calling the police. She said she has stage four cancer and doesn't want to ruin her son's first production. Howard then busts through the door stating Jonathan can't go on after taking some pills. Oliver can't think of who could replace him and Howard very vaguely suggests that there is someone who knows all the lines and can bear the weight of the detective hat. We cut to Uma next to Matthew Broderick taking seats at the start of the show, and Oliver is on stage taking the role of detective, singing Creatures of the Night. Thankfully, there were no crabmen breeding. Mabel goes backstage as Tauber gives her the recording of Donna's confession and tells her that he was offered an indie film in LA and asks her to think about going with him. As Loretta finishes the song Look for the Light, she goes off stage and then attempts to tell Dickie that she was his mother, but she didn't need to. Dickie tells her that he knew. He felt it from the moment he first saw her. Loretta tells Dickie that she hopes that he knows that there was never anything that she wouldn't do for him if she could. While hearing this conversation, Mabel sees Donna and Cliff talking, and Cliff walking away crying. She follows him up to the rafters, where she tells him that though Donna admitted to killing Ben, she believes that Cliff did it, reciting Donna's line, one on the lips and one in the heart where she transfers a kiss to her hanky and puts it in the chest pocket of Cliff's coat. Mabel theorizes that Donna did the same thing on opening night. Mabel further spins her theory that Ben's phone call was the hospital with his labs coming back positive for poison in his system. At this point, he would question Cliff about it and then realize that Donna was the one that brought him the cookies, left one in his dressing room, and that was the only thing he had ingested that night. Ben realized that Donna thought that he sucked and that she was saving her boy's show. Cliff tells Ben that he thought that he wasn't ready for the show, that he was a fake and a phony. Cliff then admits to Mabel that this is what happened, but it was an accident. Cliff, distraught, thinks about ending his own life and imagines seeing Ben on stage instead of Oliver and not wanting his mother to take the fall for his actions. He dangles from the rafters and soon his mother's hand comes to him as he cries to her. The trio and his mother pull him up as they all head downstairs for a curtain call, just as the police arrive arresting Donna and Cliff. At the show's after party, Oliver reveals that Maxine did indeed like this version of the show. Dickie comes and tells Loretta that Family Burn Unit is willing to wait for her and other people are interested in her for their projects. She's hesitant about leaving, but Oliver tells her it's a fresh start for her and her son and he will visit them in LA even though he only likes it in small doses. Mabel and Tauber talk, where she tells him that she needs to fix things here in New York before she goes to anyone else. But like Oliver, she likes LA in small doses and she will visit him. While the trio converse about what their next podcast could be about, Charles brings up the idea of a cold case. Enter Saz Pataki with a cold case of old Belgian beer. She states that she needs to talk to Charles about something sensitive. In celebration, Charles says that he's going to go upstairs to get a bottle of 1966 Artigian Malbec that he's been saving for a special occasion. But just before leaving, he gets a text from Joy, hoping it was feelers, but in all actuality, she was maybe taunting him, saying that Scott Bakula says hi, a man who's been a running joke throughout the series. I believe this is why, instead of Charles, Saz goes up to get the bottle from his apartment. While walking through the dark apartment, Saz is shot, and just before she dies, it appears she attempts to start writing something in her own blood as the camera cuts to black. Ooh wee, I love this episode, but let's do some decoding. But before we do, I need to let you know that I do have a few more videos planned for this season 
and next season. Things like who is Moriarty, who killed says, but I also wanted to cover some other things. So there is a poll on my page. Let me know what option you would prefer to see, or if you prefer, you can see the options in the description and then you can just let me know down in the comments. But let's get decoding and an overall review of the season. I know some may not have liked the ending, but I myself thought it was very good. I was sad Jonathan didn't get his chance to shine on stage, even more so that Howard didn't, but it was understandable. If Howard ended up on stage, we may have thought that he was guilty after all, and there was no need to make things more confusing. It was a refreshing turn for Donna to just admit to poisoning Ben, and to me, it was clear the moment that she denied pushing him, but then admitted once the death rattle hanky was brought up that she was indeed protecting her son, and that for some reason, he had her hanky. I totally glossed over the moment where she put her hanky in his pocket. It was beautiful and sad that a mother realized that her son must have done it, but as she had stage four cancer, she was willing to take the fall so her son could have a life. I have to interject with a small critique of the show here, though it can easily boil down to the trio are horrible detectives, but I feel like it might be going a little far. I don't understand why they never attempted to identify all of the hankies. It was something that was brought up very early in the season. Yes, Charles collected them all from the cast, but when they were all accounted for, he should have spoken to KT or someone. The trio themselves should have figured out more hankies were given out. We saw non-cast members with them. Howard had one. KT had one. Why not go through everyone and account for all of the hankies? Yes, this would have made the show end a lot faster, but logically, it didn't make sense that they never thought of this. As it was the one clue to not who poisoned Bend, but to who actually pushed him. I very much enjoyed the character of Toblerone. Him and Mabel are a great couple, and he had some nice lines. He was a very good red herring. And up until this episode, I thought that he could have been the killer, so I call that a win. I wish we got more of him and Kemper and Bobo and the rest of the cast, but I understand it's hard to fit a lot in the limited time frame that they have. All season, Dickie did seem to be acting strangely, especially around Loretta. Someone in the comments had mentioned him talking about boo bites and thought that it was a little strange. But now we see that it makes sense that he felt like he knew that Loretta was his mother and explains why he would infantilize himself around her. One of the biggest points of contention that people may have which I was mostly worried about was Cliff saying it was an accident. Was this a murder or something else more along the lines of Zoe's death on top of the Arconia? I will say the argument can be made that it's not. I'm no lawyer, but from what I see, it looks like murder to me. First, possibly in the third degree by the way of something referred to as depraved heart murder. Murder without intent to affect death of any person causing the death of another by perpetrating an act eminently dangerous to others, or most likely second degree murder, prime of passion. Though Ben was the first of the two to break the physical barrier and push Cliff, but in context with the argument what Cliff knew his mother did, there was a break in the physical altercation and then it was reinitiated by Cliff, who, from what we see, grabs Ben and turns him, forcing his back to the open elevator shaft, pushing him, pushing him until he falls. By my non-professional opinion, this is, in fact, murder. And though he may say it was an accident, that's just someone trying to push blame off of what they did. Also, this little chestnut of a play here. Would I like to see it live? Maybe? I mean, yes just because, but I would much rather have a full soundtrack with some extra songs, including the version of Look for the Light with Kimber singing along. Their harmonies together were wonderful, and it gave it an extra layer of power. It seems that the play itself is actually kind of horrible. The detective was the killer and the father of the triplets. I don't like that at all from a storytelling perspective. I think that is horrible, but I believe they did that in the play as to not attempt to tie the killer of that story with anyone in the actual story. 
but as for murder mysteries, oof, that's not good. I can look past Mabel being on stage for the bow, but did Maxine really like that wacky show? I don't think I would, so maybe she just has better taste than me. I also want to bring up some of the inconsistencies. I feel bad for people who thought there was something going on with a possible twin or even triplets of Ben. I understand that it started with some people noticing tattoos being on different hands or reversed. And I've always been against this idea. And it's not something that I take being right with with pride because there was a lot that would make someone think that it could be a possibility. The production errors with the birth dates kept the theory alive even after Loretta specifically stated she had one kid and the Glenroys had one son after that, even with the picture for confirmation that it was only Ben and Dickie. It's really hard to get all these details right. Even big billion dollar franchises like the Marvel Cinematic Universe make mistakes with dates often. A lot of shows will make mistakes with things like dates, but I feel when it's a murder mystery, you need to be extra careful as people will look at every little thing. It's the job of the script supervisor to ensure the continuity of a story is correct. That includes objects being placed in the same spot and dates and times all match up. It's a daunting task and I understand what happened and sorry for what it was, but again, I really hope they're more careful next time. Donna and Cliff were great culprits. Even better, I don't think anyone ever correctly guessed the motive from Cliff protecting his mother who was found out by Ben. It was a touching moment when Cliff was hanging by the tips of his fingers and his mother's hands lovingly caressed him as he attempted to end his life after what he had done. That leads me to my biggest critique of the season, and I hate to say anything negative, but Ben's lab came back with rat poison, and literally minutes later, he dies. This should have been known to the police well before Greg was arrested for his murder, before he was even buried. Dickie covering up his drug use only flies so far with me. It's very irregular for this to happen. It's very irregular for someone to have rat poison in their system. And if the medical professionals thought that this possibly could have been done deliberately with malicious intent, they would have had to let the police know especially if this person was their opening night of a Broadway show and then they died right afterwards, the medical professionals would have told the police. Even with that said, still overall, I felt this season had the best mystery with the best clues and the best red herrings, more along the lines of a classic murder mystery that felt more solvable with great clues than the two previous seasons. It had great emotional stakes from multiple parties. Each member of the main cast and supporting or guests had moments they all shined, I mean truly shined in their own ways. And even though the trio was disjointed a majority of the season and these high levels of acting from the cast plus some great songs, this is my favorite season. And though season one had some iconic moments, even the season one episode 10 ending easter egg curtains for bunny a very surprising and thrilling ending to that season the death of saz by what appears to be a literal assassination attempt on charles takes the cake for season ending surprises the show has really taken it up a notch with the death of a fan favorite i've been going wild with ideas but I'm going to save most of them for another video. I will say that it looks like Saz was attempting to write the name or son information on who the killer was in blood just before she died. If you look closely, she did not make a straight line. It started to curve at the end and this could be her trailing off, but it does not appear to be a J. So I don't think Jan or Joy is the person that she's attempting to identify. It could just be her trailing off, fading out, unable to finish even one letter. But I do believe that we will get a partial message at the beginning of next season on the floor identifying her killer or attempting to identify her killer. I want to know the trajectory of the bullet that was fired. Did it come from Jan's old apartment? We know that she was across from Charles and I believe a few floors down. Maybe there was no line of sight 
site there? Did it come from the building across the street where his father used to spend time? It's going to be an interesting season. Saz also mentioned previously this season that she heard people on a ham radio, I believe, that they wish that it was Charles who died instead of Ben. I have a few videos planned out about this, including going over every one of Saz's lines throughout the history of the show. So please stay tuned for those coming up soon. I very much enjoyed talking about the show with you all, and I look forward to theorizing about it even more as we wait for episode four, which was just confirmed. So congratulations to the show and us, cause we get some more murders. Please share your thoughts below. Thank you all for watching. My name is Dallas, and I'll catch you on the rooftop.